All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Kativ's Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by Kativ Technologies. My name is Brian Mokopunsuk, Customer Success Manager here at Kativ Technologies, and thank you for joining us today. And I wanted to take a step back from uh, the modeling and, and all those tools inside of Fusion that we all uh, know and love. Uh, to talk about compliancy and licensing inside of Fusion 360. Uh, a lot of our customers uh, calling into our Lifeline technical support have been asking about a lot of uh, frequently asked questions of, of how do I, uh, if I have an, a network license, do I, am I able to access or how do I access Fusion 360? Um, questions like that that I wanted to go over and clarify for everyone today. Uh, so, and, and even uh, I also have information for those of you who maybe aren't uh, purchasing Fusion 360 for uh, the hobbyist users out there as well. I think this will be info informative for both parties. Uh, so if you guys have any scenarios, uh, particular unique scenarios that I don't go over today, please uh, feel free to leave it in the chat and I would like to talk about it or at least um, get the conversation going around that so we can help get you guys using Fusion uh, within compliance and freely here. So I'm going to go ahead and of uh, this webinar and then here's the agenda for you guys to go uh, before and after um, to fast forward the video once it's posted on YouTube. And please share your unique experience and licensing for Fusion. If, and if not unique, then maybe it will be better for you. So Okay, if you have Fusion in the collection, the product design and manufacturing collection, uh, then you may or may already not know this, but you wanna to go to manage.autodesk.com uh, and get this assigned to one of your users. You have to be either a contract manager or an administrator in order to uh, assign this seat. So manage.autodesk.com. <clears throat> I am not a contract manager, so I will be signing in as someone who is on our team. <clears throat> and once you have that, uh, you will be able to see user management here on the left hand side. You can either add someone if they're not already in this portal, or you can go down to their name and edit access. And then you can go ahead and assign them the seat. Uh, if you have the collection, then it would be it would be located down below here. Uh, I have Fusion 360 Ultimate directly here, uh, and you have to make sure this box is checked off. So that's for our standalone and and for network licenses. So if you have a network license, if you don't know what that is, and you you don't you haven't purchased a network license, you don't have to worry about this next step here. But for network license users, you still need to assign them get assigned the seat of the software in the collection. Uh, it would say something like multi-user right there. And the reason being, so network license, they usually pull, like if you have inventor network license, you, it usually pulls or it does pull the license from the server, um, the connected server that your company is uh, pointing to, right? But for uh, Fusion 360, it doesn't care about the the licenses on the server. Fusion 360, since it's cloud and in the, on the internet, it cares about you checking this box off to to the appropriate user for them to access uh, the Fusion. So if you have network license or standalone, you want to make sure the box is checked for either your Fusion 360 or your product design manufacturing collection, whichever uh, case it is for you. For those of you who are hobbyists and things like that, this doesn't relate to you as much, but this is more for the commercial uh, environment. All right. And I'll be sending you guys this uh, PowerPoint so you guys have reference to these links. These links show you how to, <coughs> excuse me, how to go about uh, accessing this uh, information or getting to these websites and things like that. All right, so there, here are two different scenarios that I want to go into that speak to the hub. Um, 
So if you've had Fusion before June of 2019 last year, then you you have a personal hub. If you have, if you started using Fusion after June or July of 2019, then you have a team hub. Uh, and the difference between the two is that a personal hub, you can't hand down the administrator role, team administrative role to uh, anyone for your existing hub. So if you work at a company and you've used Fusion before June of 2019, then you need to do the steps that I'm about to show on the next slide here. If you are new to Fusion and you you guys have started using the, the Fusion after June of July of 2019, uh, then you do indeed have a team hub. If you use Fusion and your personal for your personal use or hobbyist, then you don't have to, and you don't plan to uh, hand it off to someone later down the line, then you don't have to worry about this, but just keep in mind, you can't necessarily assign your uh, project to another person. It, it's gonna be, you can share the project and they can help edit things with you, but you can't make them an admin. And if you decide not to use Fusion anymore and hand it off to them, you, you're gonna have to go through the steps I'm about to show on the next slide here which is transferring existing your existing personal hub to a new team hub. Because if you want to be able to hand off that administrative privileges, you're going to want to bring all that old data with you. And there's, uh, there's a link there at the bottom uh, in blue, if you see here on the screen, uh, that we'll get to in a minute or so here. But let's go through one through four first before we do that. But that, that link allows you to essentially transfer all of your old data in one in one go essentially so in order to hand off your old personal data or personal hub to the new team hub you're going to want to grab an email address that hasn't been associated with you know fusion or autodesk or anything like that uh, you can just create a temporary one for now uh, i have one ready to go here and then step two we're gonna go ahead and open Fusion 360. So I have it here. I'm, I've been signed in with my existing account. Here are all my different hubs here. Um, and this is my personal hub and things like that. I just wanna show you that you don't have the capabilities. If I go under my, my name here, there's usually an administrative uh, option here if you have like a team hub or something like that but if you have a personal hub like this one is right here you don't have that option which is why we need to transfer it over so i'm going to go ahead and sign out of that here so this is my old hub let's get out of that sign out of this portal just to make to start on a clean slate here And then I'm gonna sign out of Fusion 360 here. So now I want to sign in according to those steps. Um, I wanna sign in to using my new unassociated uh, email address. So I'm just gonna put that in here. And the purpose of doing this is so I can create a new team hub. That's not, um, since this is after June of 2019, I'll be able to, to use this. Oh, I need to create an account. So I was trying to just sign in there. I need to create an account, put in my information. and then just throw in a password. And then once I hit create account, it's gonna to want to have me verify it on my email, which I have on my other page here. It's gonna just refresh the other page. It came in here. And then I'm gonna just show you guys right here. This is the email that just came in. I'll go ahead and hit verify, sign in uh, one more time.
and now it's verified. So already verified, I'll go ahead and continue. And now here's the part that differentiates uh, the new and the old uh, Fusion hubs is this part right here. In Fusion, everything happens inside a team, which is what I'm about to enter the team name of. So if you work at ABC company, you could say ABC, you can name this whatever you want, Fusion Team Hub, and that'll be the hub name. And this will be handed down from generations to generations or whoever at the, t at the company is using Fusion. And then after a few years, they, they, don't wanna, they don't work there anymore. They can hand it off to the next person behind them. Uh, so that's what this hub uh, is. And this is the way you want to go about creating it. Or this is one of the ways I would recommend going about creating it. And you don't have to worry about uh, the, the trial ending in 30 days. We only need this just so we can create the hub. Even if this trial expires, the hub is still going to be there for you. Because we're going to assign it. We're going to hand it off to someone who does have uh, access to Fusion 360, a paid version of it. So the hub won't die. And if, if you end up not renewing Fusion or anything like that, uh, which I'll talk about in a second, um, the, that, the data will still be there. Uh, you'll never lose the data. The data. Autodesk doesn't uh, delete any of that data from you. So go ahead and hit start there. All right, so it's ready to use. All right, and it's giving me some quick setup uh, information here. The subscribe now is expected. And then if I go to my name here and Teams, you can see that I'm using the ABC Fusion Team Hub. With that, I want to invite users to this hub. This is where you want to, if I go reference this step here, create a new project and invite all team members. This is so we can have visibility to who's in our team, so then we can make one of those team members an admin. So we go over here to our data panel. I'll create a new project called ABC Project. In this project, I'm going to invite, I'll invite my Kativ uh, account because that's the one with the personal hub that needs to have data transferred over to this new hub called ABC Fusion, uh, Fusion Team Hub. So Brian.Mongolfunsug, okay. And you can invite pretty much all of your Fusion 360 users here as well. Um, and they'll they'll get notified via email that someone once is invited you to the project. So I'm just going to invite this one teammate uh, so far here. Next step, we want to access Fusion in the browser, and I'll show you how to get to that. And then we have to make there's a little bit of a workflow here that I'll show you. So if we go back to Fusion, we already invited all of our team members. Go over here to your name. And you go to my profile. Now this is opening up on a different page. I'm just going to bring it up here. Welcome to Fusion Team. Yada, yada, yada. And then you can see that this is the web version of Fusion Data Panel. And then if I go to my name here, since we're using the ABC Fusion Team Hub, we have the, and this is a new uh, hub created after June of 2019. We have the ability to see admin uh, privileges here. So I'm going to click on that. And now we have the ability to look at team members and roles. And since I invited my Kativ account to this uh, email or to this project, I can change them from project contributor to team member. Note, this is the, the, the thing in this step four that I wanted to talk about. So you don't see the ability to change them to team administrator right away. You have to change them to a team member first. And then 
now you see the ability for team administrator. Not sure why that's the case, but that's the extra little step that you have to take to make them a team administrator. So now there's two team administrators. Um, and once I am done setting this up here, I can, this, this other account can just fall off. And then now this Kativ account with the old, with their personal hub data can bring it over and take over ownership of this hub of this updated team hub. So now we want to sign out of that Yahoo account that I had, and we're going to sign into the, the my Kativ account because now I'm set as a team admin and I'm going to transfer files over. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out first. And then I'm going to use this link right here. And then we can click on this Fusion Team Hub onboarding. It's giving us an introduction to, to it. And then I'm going to sign in because I signed out of my Yahoo and I'm going to sign in as my Kativ. And now this is different. So you have the ability to move projects because it recognized that you're now part of a new hub. So you can either move all of your projects all at once, or if you just want to move one or a, cup, a handful of them, you can definitely do that. I have this one created spe specifically for this, and I want to move it to that new hub we created called ABC Fusion Team Hub because I'm an admin of that. All right, so you hit next. It, this would be a page if there were other project members that I would bring along. Um, it would show their names here. I do not have any other ones. I'll hit finish. And then it's gonna, depending on how much data you have, this folder has no data in it. It's just a folder uh, to represent my old data, uh, essentially. But now it's bringing in that project that I had in my old personal hub into this new Fusion Team hub. So if we look at the projects, we can see that the old existing project with data that came in or that was created in the old personal Kativ hub is now in here and you can bring over, like I said, all those all at the same time if you want. It would just take a little bit longer to load since there's a lot more data there. So that's essentially how you do it. That's, a, that's how you hop over to a new hub and that's how you, you set yourself as an admin uh, for, for uh, the new uh, Fusion Team Hub after June of 2019. Now, I'm going to move on to the next one here. If you guys have any questions, uh, please leave it in the comments. I will or questions, and I will uh, more more than happy answer them at the last slide here. Uh, I want to go over some FAQs here. Expired Fusion 360. Uh, people ask, okay, do I still get to access my data after it expires? So there's three different scenarios that I know of for this. One, if you're a hobbyist, you can pretty much just renew your license after three, three years. Um, so you shouldn't need to be expired, per, quote unquote, uh, unless you made that account uh, a startup or a commercial use. But essentially, you can go into the expired uh, by now if you're a hobbyist. And you can essentially just say, I just want to uh, sign in as a hobby or uh, sign up as a hobbyist again on the same account and it'll make this uh, message go away. And keep in mind, if you're a hobbyist, you make less and, and your little side business makes less than a thousand a year, then you can access that within compliancy. If you're a startup that um, makes less than a hundred thousand, but more than a thousand a year, then you get Fusion for free for one year. And if you do come across the expired now and you don't plan to renew it for whatever reason, uh, there's pros and cons to it. 
pros, like I mentioned earlier, you uh, Autodesk does not delete your data, so you still have access to your data. Um, but cons, you can't edit it, uh, and you can't upload new ones. You can't. You essentially can just pull. It's just like a storage uh, place for it for you to just pull your old uh, Fusion data, but you can't uh, make new ones or or change any existing ones. So that that's that's how it is. Uh, if if you don't renew uh, Fusion, <coughs> excuse me. And then for commercial use, uh, you're you're paying around what four ninety five a year, or or if it's in the collection, then you're paying whatever the collection costs. And that's the same thing. Uh, if you don't renew it, you still have access to your data, but you can't uh, edit it or uh, upload new data to your Fusion. So. Um, if you guys have any questions on that, these are all links. I'm going to send you guys this after the presentation here. And another FAQ, and this was in the description of this webinar, was that Feature Cam is joining, uh, or it, it's being packaged with Fusion 360 uh, from what ten days ago. That Feature Cam isn't sold alone anymore. Now it's, like I said, it's being packaged with Fusion. And there's two ways it's going about. It's either you renew your feature cam standard, it'll come with Fusion, or you purchase, if you're purchasing feature cam uh, from scratch, you can purchase feature cam ultimate with Fusion 360. Now, of course, you don't have to get feature cam to get Fusion. Fusion can still be bought separately. In addition to that, there's also Eagle that's being packaged with Fusion and Eagle's uh, more for the electrical side of things, PCBs and things like that. So um, just keep that in mind moving forward if you use either Feature Cam or Eagle. Uh, here's my contact information. Uh, if you have scenarios that you don't want to bring up right now, or if you want to email me later to talk about it or call our team in the line there, I'm more than happy to talk to you guys about that. Uh, I just showed, shared what I frequently get asked. Uh, here I could see for Fusion 360. And I wanted to show you guys that new uh, hub crossover. So then you are able to just reference this video and be able to do that on your own. So let's go ahead and see if there's any questions or anything like comments like that in the, the chat room. Um, we do these webinars every Friday, or not every Friday, once a month. On Fridays, uh, I, I've been switching off with my colleague, Alex Alvarez and I. Uh, the next ones, he's actually gonna dive uh, deeper into the feature cam conversation. So if you are a user of uh, feature cam or machining a cam, um, then I would definitely recommend attending that. Uh, if you, for those of you who don't know, feature cam is an advanced manufacturing tool that's uh, not built into Fusion, but that works with Fusion, uh, kind of like um, HSM. And but this, but feature, what separates Feature Cam is that it's unique, that it automates, and it's a feature detected uh, kind of cam tool. So if you have a part that you bring in to Feature Cam, you can click a button, and essentially it can create toolpaths on its own in terms of features. Uh, to help save a lot of time, essentially, from creating toolpads. It's like a smart tool that knows how to, how to create toolpads and how you essentially want to, to cut it. Um, so he'll be going over that in the next month in February's uh, Fusion uh, Contive AVA webinar. All right, I'll give it another minute or so here. Let's see some comments from just before that you guys can see my my slides but um i hope this was informative uh for you guys if you guys have any suggestions uh to make for the next one i'm open to that as well uh for i guess the one in march i'm, I'm creating that uh, content um so if you guys want to be a part of that i'm more than happy to to speak to that uh i'm thinking of creating something with SLA printing uh, that can be incorporated and in generative design because generative design for those of you who don't know uh, is in Fusion 360 and it essentially creates the a nice um, organic and the most efficient um, design for you 
uh, to help optimize and maximize the efficiency of your design. Uh, and it's, it comes off very organic. And with SLA printing, for those of you who don't know the difference between FDM printing, which is uh, 3D printing, which is the type of printing you see uh, on a, uh, that's more common, which lies lay, uh, lays layers and layers and layers of, of plastic over each other. Um, SLA printing is like a, a resin printer that shoots uh, LCD lasers into the resin and it, it's way more accurate. So I think that would be something nice that I can show you guys in March. Uh, good for prototyping and it really complements generative design really well as well. So kind of throwing some ideas out there. You'll see in the description uh, in, in the next month what I decided to go with. But let me, let me know what you guys uh, think about that or if, if you guys have any other uh, suggestions for that as well. So I don't see anything coming in here. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, this video will be up in YouTube in about a week or so. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Take care, guys.